And as you can see from today's panel, integration from and to the cloud with on-premise applications and data will certainly be a key trend driving the next wave of cloud adoption. So with that in mind, let's look at some more examples with Darren Cunningham, Vice President of Informatica Cloud. Darren. Great. Thanks, Vance. It's exciting to be here and be part of such a distinguished panel. I'm going to cover a couple of interesting case studies that really speak to what we're seeing as the primary cloud integration adoption and usage so far as we've been seeing things in Informatica. So let's jump right in. So Informatica Cloud Services, just to give a little bit of context, about six years ago, Informatica laid out a strategic roadmap for delivering on-demand cloud-based integration or integration as a service. And the company is really starting to see broad adoption of our cloud integration services that we call the Informatica Cloud. And we did a couple of things differently. We designed our cloud service to be not for the traditional heavyweight integration specialist in a company, but we wanted to reflecting that the people that were adopting and implementing and using software as a service applications like Salesforce, they're always as technical. In many cases, they weren't quite technical at all. We delivered a very easy to use service that met their requirements. So we're going to walk through some of the use cases for the Informatica Cloud. So what we've seen in Informatica are really four primary use cases for data integration as a cloud service. Now, the first, you need to get your data into the system, whether that be Salesforce or some other software as a service application. The second is you want to synchronize that application with your on-premises based applications, databases, files, what have you. You need to cleanse the data, so data quality can never be underestimated, the importance of data quality. And then a growing use case, in particular with the large accounts, is the need to replicate that data, the need to bring it down into an on-premises-based database for backup, for archival, for business intelligence reporting and analysis. So those are what we see as really the primary cloud integration use cases. And when we talk about data synchronization, I'm just going to zero in on two here today and two case studies, data synchronization and data replication. So synchronization is probably the most common use case for cloud integration today, and some of the others have mentioned it as well. So here the primary need is to make sure that these systems are able to communicate with each other, that your front office in many cases is tightly connected to your back office application. So it might be a CRM system connecting to an ERP system. And some of the scenarios, you know, reasons why companies need to do this, you may have a business process, like an opportunity closes in the CRM system, you want to be able to automatically have visibility into orders or you know, bookings information, information that doesn't happen to be living in that one system. Or another common use case is the need for a customer, or product master, price book, that single version of the truth for the people in the CRM environment in particular. So an interesting case study that I wanted to share with you is Toshiba. This is Toshiba America's business solutions group. And here was a situation where the line of business had piloted an implementation of Salesforce. At the time, the IT organization was busy rolling out all kinds of other business applications and systems, middleware, et cetera, and they didn't have a lot of resources or bandwidth to help the line of business group, in particular the sales ops team. So after looking at a number of different vendors, they chose Informatica Cloud Services based on the ease of use for the fairly non-technical ops people that needed to be able to manage and deliver the integration. So I wanted to take you through a couple of screenshots that show what this looks like. Because some people say to me, what do you mean integration can be easy, can be for a non-technical person? So what we delivered with Informatica Cloud is a multi-tenant repository where you define your tasks. In this case, I'm setting up my connections. I'm going to select my data sources, my targets, very depth-based wizard to allow you to walk through the integration needs. You can set up filters, and then this is the screen that usually gets people's attention, where very quickly I can drag and drop and create the mappings between fields. And then once I've set my mappings, I can schedule the job to run at any different frequency. So we've really tried to make it look and feel like the SaaS applications that most people are adopting and getting value from, and target that kind of user to be able to do this themselves. So an important point here is that the data, once you execute the task, it sends the instructions down to what we call our secure agent, which in many cases is running on-premise, and that data is moving bidirectionally to and from the systems. We don't physically host or stage the data in the Informatica cloud. 
So that was an interesting use case at Toshiba, and they've continued to see growing adoption of the Informatica Cloud Service to the point where the IT organization is now starting to really get involved and use this, and they're growing arsenal of endpoints that they're starting to connect uh, with the Informatica Cloud. So pretty uh, interesting story. Another quick one is data replication. So I mentioned in larger companies in particular, you've probably got a need to back things up or you've got a group that needs information in the data warehouse for business intelligence reporting and analysis. So we see a lot of our large Informatica enterprise company, we have over 4,000 enterprise customers, many of them are complementing what they're already doing with the Informatica technologies and taking advantage of things like our data replication service to really meet the needs of the frequent changes that occur in the software as a service applications. People are adding fields, custom objects, and what have you. So a case study here really quickly, Telegraph Media Group in the UK. Talk about a mission-critical implementation. If data isn't available within the CRM environment, newspapers don't get delivered. So they actually are running a true 100% cloud-based integration whereby they have a MySQL database sitting in an Amazon EC2 environment, and data is being replicated from the CRM system into that hosted database on a near real-time basis and reporting takes place on that data, historical trending and analysis, et cetera. So a couple of quick case studies. Informatica Cloud is really, as I mentioned, starting to take off in the market. We're seeing tremendous adoption from companies of all sizes. And you can easily go to informaticacloud.com to learn more. Thank you. Darren, thank you. Very, very compelling story about how some pretty well-known companies are taking the leap and using the cloud as a very enterprise-capable integration environment. Just before we go, a real quick question on you. The thing that struck me so valuable about both of your examples is that not only are your customers using the data integration features to facilitate their data sharing itself, but that it's leading to better data quality and even maybe some capability for dashboarding. Yeah, I mean, um, it's a garbage in, garbage out situation, right? With SaaS applications so easy to get up and running, oftentimes data quality is an afterthought. And similarly, data integration is often an afterthought. You know, one business group gets it going and then realizes, wow, wouldn't it be great if we could connect to the data in that other system and be more aligned with that other business group? So I think there's a change happening around software as a service adoption People are, are struggling with what I've referred to and others have as a SaaS sprawl. You know, there's a recognition that you really need to think these things through early on in the process and not put it off. And I took a little peek at some of your solo slides coming up later today, and I guess we're going to get a very uh, strong look at what are some ways I can deal with SaaS sprawl as well as optimize my data integration for data quality. Yeah, I wanted to cover what we see as the evaluation criteria. What should I look for? Or what should I, as a developer or as a end user, think about as I go down this path? So that's really what we're going to zero in on in the next session. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Darren, thanks very much. Thank you, Vance.